I don't know if you've seen the video of uh, Coach Norvell running like a 4-2 down the sideline on the return. Uh, where were you? I don't know if I saw you in the frame. And, and just what what was the you – know, he said he just was so excited because of all the work that that group's put into that unit and to see it result. What, what was your reaction? Uh, I wasn't running that fast. I know that. Um, no, I was I was there on the side kind of, kind of uh, watching it go, and I kind of was working with it down the field, but uh, certainly not at Coach Norvell pace. But uh, – um, you know, I, I was, there has been a lot of work put into it and Keon's been really close. And I think as a unit, we've been really close on a couple of returns that, cause a lot of things have to have to all happen at the same time, right? You need the, the kick that is returnable. You need it to be blocked up the right way. And sometimes you got to make somebody miss and all those things happen within that, that play that allowed that to get out and be an explosive play. And, and, um, you know, I can't say enough good things about that, u that unit as a whole in terms of how they prepare and work during the week because they have gotten better as the year's gone on. But also what Keon's been able to do, um, you know, just what he brings, uh, his toughness, um, his confidence, um, his big playability, I think um, we're just going to start to see, start scratching the surface on, on what that unit could be uh, with him back there. Keon said after the game, and then Coach Norvell said today, kind of you didn't anticipate him taking that role when when you brought him in. I guess when did he start distinguishing himself to you as as the the guy who's going to be the part turner? And when did he you think he had kind of the the big playability there that he's shown? Well, you know, so in, in the summertime, um, cer certainly we had a, a little bit of a. Uh, an issue in terms of inexperience at the spot because you know last year we had the same returner essentially the whole season um, so we didn't have anybody with with really any return experience uh, so we were trying different guys back there and and we did give him a shot to, to see what it looked like um, but really I think early on in, in the summer and fall fall camp period the thought in my mind at least was probably LT probably Jakai one of those two and then Jakai got hurt um, so that kind of really forced the issue in terms of, okay, we really have to, to find someone uh, who's going to solidify the spot more than one guy. And he, just through the course of fall camp and the way he worked, he just did a terrific job. And it wasn't until a couple of weeks into fall camp where, you know, I think we kind of started to look at each other and say, I, I think he can do this, um, you know, even though he has not done it before. And he's just, he just did a great job. And, um, you know, just the, the type of player he is and his mentality – uh, breeds confidence not only to, to the coaching staff but but everybody around them. With all that in mind, like, is there a way to know? Like, you obviously know he's big and fast, and you get to see him in practice, being able to feel punts and, and see some progression. But like, to know that what he did on that seventy-five yarder that he has that in him, that specific athleticism as a returner, until you see it. Well, I mean, the I think when you see him every day playing wide out, you kind of see uh, what what he can do with the ball in his hand. Um, and every time he makes a, a big play offensively, I think to myself, well, yeah, that guy, he's also back there returning punts. Um, and, and it's just a matter of time until he makes one of those plays as a punt returner. And, you know, he's had, he's had a couple opportunities where, like I said, it was really close. Um, but he, him having the ability to break out and have a big one there, that was, that was great for him. It was great for the whole unit. Um, and I, I think it's something to build on us, uh, build on for us going forward. Conrad obviously had two penalties on the special teams. What do you say to him? He's obviously a freshman trying to make a play in that moment, but it also ended up hurting the team. Sure. Um, you know, I think I think all all lessons that happen throughout courses of games, especially for young players, are valuable if you can take the uh, take the information that you gain from the experience and then let it help you become a better player moving forward. You know, when you, throw, when you thrust true freshmen into positions where they're playing a, a role, no matter how big or small it is, um, you know, you know that there's going to be some growing pains that go along with it, some lessons that are going to be learned on Saturdays that um, it's just hard to teach, um, you know, Mondays through Fridays. And, uh, you know, he learned a, a lesson there. And I think part of that is just, you know, having some awareness and then not not allowing your emotions to get the best of you in, in the situation. And, uh, you know, I think he's a really talented player, and I think he's going to have a really good career here at Florida State. Um, but that's one of those opportunities to grow and learn from. And, uh, you know, we, we took the opportunity as a coach, coaching staff to do it. But I think he also uh, was able to receive the lessons. And um, I think with every time he's out there, he's going to get better and better. 
Similar to the punting here, Duke is having a lot of success on punting as well, and strong on punt defense too. I guess, how are you guys preparing to see, you know, a similar look from them when it's coming to the punting and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they do. They have uh, really good cover units. Um, you know, I think we're one and two in, in terms of punt. I, th I think that's how it's playing out right now. Um, you know, I think, you know, that field position battle is going to be a big part of the game, um, you know, and and uh, our ability to cover punts and, and Alex's ability to, to locate the ball where, where we need to locate it uh, is going to be a critical factor in it. And then our ability from a return standpoint um, to have, have an opportunity to make a play um, to really help create some field position because obviously they're good on defense. Um, so we want to be able to win that field position battle and put our offense in, in the most advantageous positions we possibly can. Coach, dating back to the Boston College game, a team has either missed an extra point or a field goal against you guys. How much credit do you give to your uh, kick front? Um, I, I mean, I think in this particular case, I think it had a lot to do with it. Um, if you look at the very first uh, field goal block uh, where they made the kick, uh, Shy was like inches. Like when you watch it on, on film, it's, it's hard to tell how the ball he missed his hand as, as he was going to block it. Um, and I do think that that plays a little bit into to a kicker's head uh, when he feels that kind of pressure. And we brought the same block off the edge um, that we that we brought the first time on the missed kick, and the ball was pulled. Um, you know, and I, and I think I think in all of those, to, to think that that the pressure doesn't have a factor. Um, you know, I, I prefer to think that, that we did impact it. Now, could the kid have just pulled the ball? Sure, he could have. But I think the pressure absolutely had a factor in it. And I think, I think when you look back at the, some of the misses that have happened, um, they have had good pressure on all of them. I think uh, two weeks ago, I think you really saw a, a good game from Gilbert Edmond. I think this past week, it was Byron Turner, I guess. Just as those two guys have, have grown into that, how much better do you feel now relative to maybe six weeks ago about just the two deep, especially at defensive end? Oh, I, I, you know, I feel a lot better because, um, you know, it's one thing to have guys that you feel like have upside and potential, but until you go out and prove it, until you have the opportunity to get on the field and, and make plays and execute and um, play within the defense, um, you still don't know for 100% what it's going to look like. And, uh, you know, both those guys have done a really nice job. I've been pleased with Byron. Um, you know, he's a guy that, that, you know, obviously we recruited and has been developed within this program. And, uh, you know, I just see him getting better every time he goes out there. Um, he plays fast. He plays with an edge. He plays physical. Very similar to how he, he how he played um, in terms of covering kicks. You know, he he you feel his presence when he's out there, especially um, you know with with the physicality he likes to play the game with. Um, so I've been pleased with the development of, of both those guys. I, I, you kind of touched on what you said before about scratching the surface with that unit, but are you noticing Keon the more he does it, especially in games like? he's maybe realizing what he can do, maybe? Sure. I, th I think the more he's back there, the more confidence he's gaining in it. Um, Keon's really, really smart um, in terms of, of how he understands the game. And uh, even throughout the course of the week, like he totally gets who's, who – who is being double teamed, or who who their good cover guys are, or where the the seam could hit? Like he he has a really good feel for um, what is happening in front of him, and I think that helps him when he's out there. I mean, he actually even came during the game and said, "Hey, I think we should run, you know, a certain return." And um, you know, but he had a reason behind why he thought that that would be the one. Um, and I think just that that kind of investment and that kind of buy-in into that role, because it's really easy just to, to, to say I'm a wideout who sometimes returns punts. But I think he looks at it as like whatever my role is on any given play, that's what I'm going to go do to the best of my ability. And when you have guys that are like that, it gives you a chance. Patrick, I don't know if it's a knack, but seemingly knocking down balls uh, at the line of scrimmage, interrupting you know passing windows. How tough is it to walk that balance to be a pass rusher and wanting to get to the quarterback, but then knowing that maybe you're not going to be able to get home, so let me try to disrupt this play in another way? Well, you know, it's something that um, obviously he has a great feel for. Um, some of that is just kind of his in innate ability, but you know, it is something we practice a lot as well. Um, you know, pre you know that 
first couple of periods of practice, um, a lot of times we're doing some kind of yeah ball disruption circuit, whether it's a, a takeaway circuit or or my mine in particular is always some type of of quarterback throw ball disruption, and um, you know it, it's it's about getting your hands up at the right time. Yes, I want him to be a pass rusher first. I mean that that's the idea: get off off uh, get off the ball and, and try to win on the rush. But if you can't get there, having your ability to put hands and throw lanes is critical. And then also having good situational awareness, like the uh, the one against LSU was third and five. Third and five for us, we the way that we we teach it, the ball's going to be coming out quick. So you're probably not going to be able to have a, a you know a wide rush where you went around the tackle because the ball's going to be out. So it's more of a power rush, get your hands to throw lanes and knock balls down. And I think Pat has just really good situational awareness. Like, and and I hope I would love to say that every single player on the defense always knows exactly what the down and distance is. Uh, I would say in Pat's case though, he does. He knows exactly what it is and. And he plays to the situation really well. Yeah, thank you guys.